Well, Maria, good evening. Welcome to the Daily Examiner. My name is Ellie Diki Lee. I am someone who is going to be hopefully hidden for a while, but uh, without further ado, allow me to introduce to you the other director of the Examiner. That would be Mel Taylor. Kia ora, Mel. Kia ora. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. So, uh, team, this is something that we just wanted to have a real quick chat about what the Daily Examiner is, who we are, and just a real quick one, and any questions that you bring up, uh, we want to make sure that we can answer for you. Uh, and, and yes, yeah, so without further ado, Mel, would you just give a little quick brief bio of yourself, just so we understand who you are, where you're from? Awesome. I'm up in Northland in Mangasharoto on a 16-acre block of land, which is fantastic. Got my lovely husband and... Um, two out of four children living here and I'm a specialist caregiver for a department <laughs> and we look after high at risk and behavioural teenage boys so yeah we've cared for over 400 boys over 20 odd years um, which has been really really cool to journey alongside them so yeah. Awesome 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 uh, and yep just for myself so uh, yep, yeah, sort of raised up, uh, born in Barbados North, raised up in Hamilton and in Auckland, spent some time over in, overseas. Probably for the last 20 years, professionally or personally, I've been working quite heavily with high risk or at risk young people and their families uh, and dotted into places like the trades and have had a bit of an adventure for quite a while. <laughs> so where we come into play is basically uh, both myself and Mel were a part of political and it was actually family based is why, why we got into it. We saw a, quite a lot of suffering on the streets and then we sort of joined in and we realized that the issues are a lot to do with the beehive, with Wellington policies and procedures and laws that have been coming out. Um, as we journeyed on, we found that families, there was not an active, but a seemingly active attack on the family itself, on the economics surrounding the family, uh, and, and the ideas of sovereignty, personal responsibility, and the, the things that the West were built on. When we fought, what we found was that the media was very much in favor of a very progressive or a leftist ideology, which is, of course, that actually the one, the mum, dad, kids, family is not the best. In fact, there are multiple other forms, and there seem to be a lean towards deconstructing the family unit. We also found that there was a strong push for leftist policies, which is throw money at problems, and, and we found that benefit dependency was increasing. We found that the idea of sovereignty was being weakened, that the United Nations, of course, was starting to, we were starting to have alignments between certain politicians in New Zealand and UN agendas that didn't actually have the ideas of, of conservatism in the West at heart, but it still took its money. So we found that that was uh, an element that was actually being pushed. So we, Mel and I, joined a particular movement, and that was a movement that we are very much proud to have been part of. That was, of course, a conservative movement. That was the ideas of West, Western culture, which is which is the greatest culture on, in the history of mankind. There has been no other culture like it and that of course was the combination of Jerusalem and Athens or or Judeo-Christian principles within a, uh, a democratic style of governance not perfect but but was really really powerful so we went along in that in that regard uh, that the issue that we found strongly was that a lot of the people in New Zealand and also the West were only hearing a very much a one-sided view of things because as we know the media the establishment media very much are to the left and therefore they were happy to push socialism uh, gender ideology removal of families abolition of nature you know uh, anti-scientific propagation so that's what we found uh, to to have occurred uh, therefore when the politics started to subside somewhat we realized What's there's near very little point or nearly no point in being able to fight in the political arena while the voice of those who fight for the traditions and the pro science, pro democratic, pro honoring side of things 
that that voice has not been heard. Uh, and hence why we are now at the point where we have decided to put our money where our mouth is and start up the Daily Examiner. So that, that's my brief anyway. Uh, what, what do you think, Mel? What's your part of that? You're totally right. And, I mean, while we were in the political sphere, um, we met so many amazing organisations, so many amazing people, conservatives, people that are really, really trying to represent, um, you know, families and things in New Zealand. And they would put out press releases and they would have amazing articles and nothing, nothing. Mainstream media just shut them down, shut them down, not interested. Um, and that's really sad because they have some really good things to say. And that's what we've established the Daily Examiner for. So the idea also is to be an umbrella for all those organisations that have been ignored, that have a powerful voice and some amazing things to say, things that will help benefit the country and our families. Um, so, yeah, really excited to, to, to work alongside those organisations. Yeah, so th and that actually, that's a good segue. So just want to let you know, if you've got any questions at all, pop them into the comments where we will see them or yeah, our team's going to pick them up and pop them through. So we'll, we'll be forced to answer them. It'll be free speech, free speech hard. So uh, when what Mel has said, in a sense, segues how we are going to be doing things. So you'll find that stuff, New Zealand Herald, these the establishment media, what they do is they will go through and then they'll republish things from Associated Press, Reuters, from MSNBC, from CNN. Uh, we don't seem to see much from Fox. In fact, we don't see any from Fox. So <laughs> not sure why that is. Who knows why? Uh, so what we want to do, there's a bit of a two-pronged way that we are engaging, or sorry, a three-pronged way. One way is that we are going to make sure that the voice of those organizations are going to be heard. So, for example, places like Family First, Voice for Life, uh, Buttons Project, you know, they've given us allowance to, to republish and also to make sure that their voice gets heard in the public's arena. We're going to make sure that that's going to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. Also on, on top of that, we're also going to make sure that we have citizen journalists. And citizen journalists are going to be people who are living in the field. They are in the front line. As an example, there is a clinical psychologist and that person, whether male or female, that person really wants to write a couple of articles on certain things and they will be coming with very much stats and experience and what's going on in the field. And we have got certain ways to make sure that they're going to be protected We've got uh, ways that we're going to make sure that they are not going to be hung out to dry, so to speak, in that regard. And the third one, of course, is we're going to be out there. We are going to be doing our own journalism. We're going to be getting into the press. We're going to make sure that we have uh, getting the, the the truth of what's going on out there. So you'll be finding that, and, the, and we will we will take a, a humorous and a serious <laughs> mode on things. Uh, but what yeah. might you want to add into there, there, Mel? balance there's been no balance for so long and that's what we want to create you know there's been some major things happen in New Zealand um there's been the euthanasia the abortion all the stuff that's been going on and there's predominantly been one narrative so that's where we want to bring in the other side the other arguments you know to, to bring some balance mm. yeah well said well said so so we will be we will be operating in terms of that. We'll be operating through website. We'll be operating through social media that will engage in, for example, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Gab, Rumble. Well, I think we'll be into Rumble. We'll also be on, I believe we're in about six or seven different social media sections. And this is how we, we will be operating. Like I said, um, we will make sure that the voices get heard, that they will be part of the organisation. Uh, oh, I, I've been remiss. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry, someone's, someone's pointing out. Oh, okay, great. Thank you so much. Gypsy Jewels, this is great to have alternative ways to get through to the, the general public. Absolutely right. Thank you so much. Karen, how it should be. Hua. Absolutely right. Danielle Brown is exactly what New Zealand needs right now, guys. Well done. Thank you so much. And Jippy, I, I, I'm an old guy. I have no idea what those emojis are. So, you know, maybe, maybe Mel knows what they are. I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got. So I'm going to now. I'm what I'm going to do is uh, while we're cruising along, I actually also want to bring in uh, a third person. This is one of the powerhouses behind the team. 
This is uh, someone who has been uh, very much patient with us as well. So I want to bring him in. And please help me to welcome Dave Robson. Dave, kia ora, kia ora. Hey, Elliot, Mel, how are you going? Good, <laughs> good, 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 good. So, David, look, I'm going to throw you on the spot. So just for all of you guys out here, just for you guys who are watching, David doesn't know I'm about to do this. So, <laughs> so I, I have a bad habit of this. I've been told I have a very bad habit. So I just want to know, David, what? Why are you part of this team? Why are you part of this project? What is it that and what is it that you want to sort of see in the future going forward? Um, well, I think along the, sort of the same lines as you guys. I mean, I've grown up um, as a Christian, and and seeing, like you guys have mentioned, sort of the decline away from morality, the de decline away from family values, the decline away from truth has pushed me to uh, want to get involved in in politics. Um, so I was. I'm fairly heavily involved in the 2020 campaign uh, on the conservative side of things. Um, and like, as we all know, unfortunately, that didn't go too well. But um, that sort of drove me to ask myself, well, what actually can I do? Because um, at this point in time, at least, I don't really have an intention to make a run for office or anything. But I, I still wanted to be able to do something. So I'd, I'd always thought of... Uh, making some sort of conservative platform or, or a, a media website that would be uh, based on truth and trying to uh, to hold a balanced view as opposed to the um, the leftist and government supported media that we that we all see and deal with on a daily basis so um, yeah then I linked up with Elliot uh, after the election and uh, surprise surprise found out he wanted to do exactly the same thing so that's sort of where we uh, <laughs> where we come together and it's awesome because it's something that I've never been able to do on my own. So to be able to link up with a group of people who have the same mindset and and together as a group, we're able to to push something way bigger than than what we've got to do on our own. So yeah, thank you guys for the opportunity to jump on with you, and it's going to be an awesome journey ahead. Mm. No, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, Dave's now, been an absolute asset, um, helping us out heaps. And on that note, I'm just going to cut you off for a minute, Elliot. Um, I wanted to say that this has been this has been an absolute team effort, real team effort. We've got an incredible team. Um, Dave, all the work he's done. We've got people doing amazing imagery and memes and putting together all sorts of stuff. A really awesome team. So a big shout out to them, and a massive shout out um, to my husband. And um, yeah, the kids have been very very patient. They're all sitting around very quiet at the moment. And all off the internet, um, so it doesn't cut out here in Northland. <laughs> Northland, eh? Can, yeah. can I get? Can I make some? Uh, you know, can I make some Aucklander jokes like uh, 52k or something? Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, right. Now look, we've had a we've had a quick chat. We've had a bit a bit of a question here, which I, I absolutely love. Renee uh, Brunton has come on. How does Jacinda get the media to only spout her narrative? Does she really pay them off? And how come we see overseas the exact same script read on multiple stations at the same time? Had someone brought them up with a or brought them up with a personal narrative, and how will you try to reach more people? So, Renee, thank you so much for those uh, every single one of those hard and heavy questions. <laughs> so, team, you know what? I'm going to throw it out to you guys. Yeah, you as well, David. What do we think? Any of those questions uh, uh, that you think you might want to answer away there? I think for me, it comes down to funding because um, these mainstream media that we see, it's a business. It's not a passion. It's not something that, they, that they're that they wanting to do for a good cause. Whereas at, at this point, everyone that you see on the screen and everyone behind the scenes, we're, we're not employed by the Daily Examiner. We're doing this in our, in our own time and at our own cost. So everything you see is because we're passionate about it. The mainstream media rely on funding from the government to to pay their bills, to uh, to pay their reporters, whereas that's not us, that's not what we want to be. We're doing it because we love it and because we want to push the truth. Well said, yeah. well said. Mel, yeah. what I, do you think? I think it's based on, I mean, a lot of it's based on what sort of government there is in, in whatever country. And at the moment, um, worldwide, it's a fairly liberal government system. So hence the media swing towards the liberal side which is really really mm. sad and a lot of that question could actually be statement yep no well said well said uh yep for myself i absolutely agree 
the 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 media are not so much directly paid by the government to spout their rhetoric, but they are very much friendly to the hand that feeds them. They know very well that their that money is desperately needed. Uh, you've got they always are screaming out for money, yet they are very happy to grab onto the the government's money as well. And you'll see that uh, through taxpayers' union, do very good exposés on exactly what's going on in that regard. Uh, uh, millions and millions of dollars of your dollars are, are going to their funding. Uh, not only that, I believe that it was two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, that it was released that the government is actually funding journalists in some of these papers. So they're actually having now a direct funding towards the journalists. And that, of course, skews the very idea of a fourth estate and an imbalanced or a, a, a balanced media. So that's what that's about. And, and as these two have also brought up, we're doing this for the love. We we love New Zealand. We love our people. And there is a sentimentality there. We are we are we're not happy about to be sacrificial, but we choose to be sacrificial in order that our people will be better equipped for the future. This is how vital it is. It is it is more important than our comfort and our, our luxury. You know, we, I can tell you that, that many of us actually, we work nine to fives. And some of us work more than nine to fives. Yet you'll still see us gunning hard to make sure that our people can hear the truth and to find out what the actual balance of things are. Now, I'm, I'm going to be that guy very soon. We're going to have a donate button when we release. Uh, a couple of days after that, we're going to have a donate button. Hey, you, if you want to put money towards it, please. You know, it'll make our lives easier. And if we get enough money to be able to get a staff on board full time, you know, we will be able to to blow up the spot. I guarantee you. Uh, so, Renee, thank you so much. How are we trying to reach more people? By you. By you sharing and sharing the truth to get it out around to the people. That's why it's a website. That's why it's a .co.nz, not some sort of random sort of figure. We've made sure that we've invested some quality items, quality products in there, so that's going to be a, a proper functioning uh, environment for us to, to come home to. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Uh, yes, I think Mel is speaker of that house. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Right. Very good. I'm actually in, I'm actually in my husband's um, throne chair. But, um... The throne chair, very good. This is what happens in the Northland. They all have thrones. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, so some wonderful responses coming up. Jacinda pays the media with our money. That's actually accurate, I suppose. Yeah, actually. Uh, Renee, thank you so much. Yep, absolutely. Thank you for the question. Hey, David. Oh, oh, so hey. Hey, someone's name dropping. Hey, so, Shane. Someone's name dropping. Good to see you there, Shane. Matakapi, <laughs> Kaorana. Uh, very good. Good to see you guys there. Uh, oh, there. <laughs> David's actually doing some geeky stuff. Wonderful. And oh, look, see, even some of our team are on board there. <laughs> so look, this is actually some of the things that, that we've seen right the people media absolutely uh, right you know these are coming from uh, people that are going from the front line these are going to be people with experience one of the big things about journalists or interestingly that the intersectionality of journalists academics and politicians there is a strong disconnect between those three pieces and the rest of new zealand so make no no mistake, when when the establishment media are telling you one thing, you are not getting the full news. You're not. When they refuse to show how many people are standing up for their rights, their freedoms in Italy, in Australia, in France, uh, across the United States, you're not seeing the vast amount, the hundreds of thousands of people who are protesting not just every single week, but every single day. You're not getting to see those. So we're going to make sure that you do hear what's absolutely going on. We're going to make sure that the footage you see is the real footage. You're not going to get any sort of, of short change sort of articles with us. We're going to make sure. And if you have an issue, you bring it up to us. All right, we, we'll take it on. Every one of our articles will allow for commenting. Every one of our articles will ensure that they're freedom of speech. Uh, apart from... We've had a chat about it, apart from profanity. <laughs> profanity and I think, what, well, calling for violence or something like that, you know, we'll go there. Hey, let's go. That's why we're really excited to have citizen journalists, you know, people on the ground, people that want to have their say, that feel like they're being stifled. So we just want to, um, yeah, be able to help out. 
Mm. Awesome. Oh, Alicia, looking great, Mel. Very good. Oh, Very good. You, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, look, we just wanted to, we really did just want to come on to the show and have a very quick chat just to say what is it what's going to happen and and how are we going to go forward uh, with this now the release date has been chosen to ensure that we're not going to have a crash website because we have heard uh, outside of social media that there's a lot of attention on the website itself the website will be the daily examiner.co.nz and that website will be going live uh, david when, when are we looking at having that one go live proper? When do you think? We're looking at doing a, a soft launch from uh, 11.59 tomorrow night, so close to midnight, so 25th at 11.59 p.m. Um, so basically from Tuesday morning we'll be live, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be great to see you guys on there. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Mainstream media. There's some really cool categories. Um, we've each had our input, which is really awesome. So, yeah, mm. it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, no, absolutely right. Uh, Steve, just to let you know about your question there, how do we guarantee a fair election next who will be our watchdog? Actually, let, let's ask. W what do you guys think? This is, a, actually, this is actually a good question to, to ask. What do you guys think about this particular question? <laughs> I can see the answer. I can see the answer in the eyes. <laughs> okay. Go for it. The answer comes down to you guys, eh? To the to the people who are, who are watching and listening, and to our citizen journalists who are going to jump on board and help us um, yeah. be able to report fairly, because it's only with, through 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 sites like this, which are independent and committed to telling the truth, that we can we can ensure a fair election. Um, so yeah, it's up to you guys sharing, commenting, um, writing for us. Uh, I reckon that's it, eh? Awesome. Mel, what do you think? Yeah, and definitely, I totally agree. And that's where we're wanting to bring some balance. Um, last election was really interesting. There was a, a certain issue that was going on in the world, and there was a lot of media coverage um, for one particular party. So, yeah, if we can bring balance, there are lots of other organisations that are really, really good watchdogs. Um, and yeah, if we can umbrella them and, and put some of their stuff out as well, I think it'd be really cool. Yep, well said. <laughs> uh, you know what? We, we could ask Trump to help, actually. That would be quite awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, well, I'm a Trump 2020 guy. So, <laughs> I'm Trump 24. <laughs> uh, for myself, I think that, uh, yes, I believe that we could, I, I believe we probably will get to another election. I know that uh, for a lot of the last campaign, I said basically, if we don't get it, Sus this time, the strong possibility or probability is that we'll lose the the rest of our freedoms. And so far, it's it's been unprecedented the amount of freedoms that we've actually lost. And at the same time, how much power the government has actually taken for themselves, and how much they've added to themselves as well. Uh, I want to say that there are good people still in Parliament. I think my my own personal favourite is Simon O'Connor. He is, a, he is a man who is, as far as I'm concerned, the greatest politician we have had for now and also in the recent history. Uh, that's something which I'll, I'll put my name to. Uh, but there are still good people in there, uh, and it's still really important to, to push it out there, uh, ask Trump for help and all that sort of good stuff. So anyway, last words from any of you guys. What, what do you want to give for your last words? Oh, me, I just want to say, um, yeah, check it out on, on Tuesday. It's it's going to be awesome. Awesome. Dave, what do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've been, and I know we've all been blown away by the support ever since we launched on Facebook. Um, the way that you guys have gotten behind us and just had helped to push this is so good. So um, just keep doing that, eh? Keep sharing the word around. Together we'll grow bigger and stronger, and we'll be able to have an influence. Cheers, mm. guys. Awesome, awesome. awesome. Uh, and really, just for your, your last question, will you guys be licensed to gain access to press areas to ask our questions? Yes, we are pushing through with that part at the moment. We are we we are already incorporated. We're a company. We are a website. We are we've got all the bits and pieces in gear. So we it's the next sort of thing that we we are going to be putting into. Uh, so thank you so much, guys. Look, we are all here, and and it's done for our heart. We're ready to be sacrificial for it. <laughs> so in the meantime, God bless you. And God bless New Zealand.